Holden used to be one of the largest car manufacturers in Australia from the 1950s up until around 2017 when they ceased local manufacturing altogether. Plenty of iconic vehicles were produced and designed in Australia such as the HQ Kingswood, the Monaro and the Commodore SS. In Holden's history, there were cases when they would outsource parts from other countries such as Japan to aid the creation of their locally designed vehicles. A well-known creation, which was assisted by Japanese imported parts, was the VL Commodore. It used Nissan's RB30E 3.0-litre straight-six engine that came with an optional turbocharger, which is the model known as the VL Turbo. Despite the Japanese engine being used in just one series for a little more than two years, the VL Commodore became highly regarded amongst consumers and sold extremely well. But this wouldn't be the first or the last time Holden Australia would outsource from overseas as before the creation of the VL Commodore, Holden would collaborate with Isuzu Japan to import vehicles such as the 1970s Isuzu Gemini which was co-produced with General Motors and would be rebranded as the Holden Gemini in Australia. Isuzu and Holden Australia would soon form an official venture established to focus on the distribution and marketing of Holden badged Isuzu vehicles. This led to an increase of imported Isuzu engines used in various Holden utility vehicles such as the Holden Rodeo and many more Isuzu vehicles branded as Holden models. This seemed like an awesome deal at the time as Holden had so so far seen success in the import program. However, that would soon change as one model in particular would prove to be one of the biggest automotive losses local manufacturers had ever seen. This vehicle was called the Holden Piazza. Launching in Australia in 1986, it was the most expensive Holden yet, costing a cool 34,500 AUD. Built in Japan by Isuzu, the Piazza was styled by the famous Italian, and I'm definitely going to butcher the name, Giorgetto Giugiaro, who designed the well-known DeLorean DMC-12 years earlier, as well as other well-known vehicles. With the sharp-edged, clean-line body, the Piazza looked exotic and even more European, hence the price tag. Further justifying the high price was a futuristic digital dashboard, a choice of 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic transmission, plus a 2-litre turbocharged engine, which made a whopping 140 horsepower. Now this was actually impressive in 1986, however it did fall short in comparison to the VL Turbo's 200 horsepower, which although heavier, would still beat the Piazza in a straight line. The VL Turbo would be significantly cheaper in cost totaling up to 27,000 AUD depending on the trim level and would sell consistently since the release. After months went by, dealers would struggle to sell the Piazza, forcing them to shave the price down to still a high 29,000 AUD. But it wasn't just the price tag which made the Holden Piazza a hard sell. Although journalists would rave on about the impressive styling, their tune would soon change when they got behind the wheel of the Piazza. Sitting on a General Motors T chassis, which was used in the 1970s Isuzu Gemini combined with a lively turbo, it was an absolute recipe for disaster. Keeping the car on the road was hard work, and in the wet it was virtually impossible, said some journalists. A popular magazine at the time stated it had bump steer, rollover steer, understeer, and an alarming nosedive when braking. The Piazza could not cope with any anything less than a perfectly flat surface, which in most cases deemed unsuitable for Australian roads. Some of the few lucky owners would state that the ride was so rough it created rattling noises throughout the cabin. The press became so bad that later on it was voted by 9 out of 10 motoring journalists as the car most likely to take a life. Due to the backlash, Holden would then go on to refund current owners the difference between the full price and the discounted price. 
As the losses piled up, Holden Australia would attempt a last ditch effort to save the Piazza and would invest in a comprehensive suspension overhaul. However, this did not do much to quell the storm. Even after the upgrade, a journalist called the Piazza the most frightening car they have ever tested in a long time. It was clearly bad news for the Holden Piazza and nothing could be done to come back from it. With only up to 200 recorded sales in Australia, the Holden Piazza would be discontinued the following year in 1987. However, it was not the end of the Piazza, nor was it the start. Australia was not the only country to receive the Piazza, as it sold in other countries including Europe as the Isuzu Piazza, Canada as the Asuna Sunfire, and United States as the Isuzu Impulse. With production starting in 1981, models were being sold well before arriving on Australian shores, including alternate engine choices such as the naturally aspirated 2.0-litre and the 2.3-litre engines. The rest of the world would actually take kindly to the Piazza as it remained in production until 1991, selling a total of 13,000 models worldwide and then being replaced with a second generation. Unfortunately, it would be a complete flop and the second generation was discontinued in 1993. Here we go, VC6. Car culture was kicking off and enthusiasts were keen to get their hands on the next car that could rip mad skids. But they would have to wait because Holden didn't offer another sports car until 1991. Calling this model the Holden Calibra, once again an overseas collaboration, but this time with a well-known European company known as Opel. The Calibra was likely to compete with a new wave of Japanese sports cars such as the Honda Prelude and Integra, the Mazda MX-6, the Mitsubishi Galant and the Toyota Celica. But like the Piazza, it also fell short due to poor handling amongst other flaws. It sold roughly 2,800 more models than the Piazza over a six year period, but nothing close to the 150,000 VL Commodores that were sold in just over two years Australia wide. Holden Australia finally gave up on imported performance cars and instead in 2001 returned to its muscle car route developing a third generation Holden Monaro. The Monaro was so popular, it sold models worldwide and now considered a motoring relic, reaching extreme high used prices. Unlike the Holden Piazza, which barely makes an appearance at any car meets, however, seems to be enjoyed by a very small but devoted following online. Clean examples are still out there and have been up there for some time for sale, and yet, Despite a few numbers, prices remain within reach if you're daring to own one. In 2021, one was auctioned for 12,600 with 107,000 kilometers on the clock. Right now on car sales, you can find a silver 1986 Piazza with 120,000 kilometers on the clock for about $17,000, clearly negotiable if you try. Or on Facebook Marketplace, there is a blue Piazza 1986 with 105,000 kilometers on the clock and it's selling for $20,000. Someone who likes unique cars, I actually considered buying one myself, but after this video, I'm probably never going to attempt that. I assume these ones might sit on the market for some time, so there is no rush to make a decision, considering now you know the history. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos. Thanks.